regarding dual zone speed cameras, this is an ordinance that would allow us to implement them if we choose at a later time. We're not selecting a company today. You must be going at least 10 miles an hour over. This is premature. I'm not a fan of these cameras. By approving this, you're going to set a precedence that, yes, it's going to be approved later on. Our police do a great job, but unfortunately, they can't be there every day. It almost sounds like uh, the decision's already been made. See commissioners that they already want to hand to It's all about money. It always comes down to money. Oh, we could make it where it's 10 miles an hour over, so you can get hit at 50 miles per hour. The problem's going to be the same thing. Uh, it's not a gotcha. It's going to generate revenue for the city. If they really wanted this to be effective, you get points. I totally look at this as a money grab, using the uh, school safety as is the, uh, the cry for help. There were over 300 comments of residents that did not want this, so I'm not a money grabber. Yeah. Antonio, do you want to go again? Or? Okay, uh, item 7A, ordinance first reading. Item 7A, an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Margate, Florida, amending the City's Code of Ordinances by amending Chapter 33, Police and Law Enforcement, Offenses and Miscellaneous Provisions, Article 6, Traffic Control, by enacting a new Section 3373 entitled Speed Detection Systems in School Zones to provide for purpose and intent, definitions, providing for the authorization to use school speed limit detection systems, a determination of safety need, and the implementation of speed limit detection systems in school zones, providing for a local hearing officer to hear appeals, providing for conflicts, providing for severability, providing for codification, and providing for effective date. This ordinance before you for first reading at this time. What is the wish of the board? I'll make a motion to approve, but I'd like to have some discussion. So if there's a I'll second, second for discussion. If I may. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, this is an item that I had asked to bring up um, several months back. And in actuality, you know, when we go to these conferences, I believe it was at the last Florida League of Cities annual conference where I think all of us that were there were approached by several of these companies and this, this concept. So I, I want to... I don't want us to get lost in, in too much conversation here. Um, regarding the school zone speed cameras, this is simply an ordinance that would allow us to implement them if we choose at a later time. Correct. We're not selecting a company today. We're not setting parameters or anything like that. We're just providing a mechanism to implement this in the future if we see fit. Um, I am a fan of this. Initially, I wanted to be the first in the county to do it. Um, but I've, you know, kind of stepped back a little bit. I want to see the process play out. Um, there were many school boards, counties, neighboring cities, I think Hokona Creek just moved to do this. Um, some cities like Plantation have chosen and selected companies. So, you know, sometimes it's good to be the first, but sometimes it's good to be last, <laughs> as we've also learned. And so I, you know, I do ask that we, I mean, this is first reading, it's still gotta come back, but I do ask that we at least pass the ordinance and then let's sit back and see how this plays out. But I, I do think that we're going to, and I don't want to get too far off topic of the goal of the ordinance, but I do think that we're going to find other cities are going to have success with this. Our police do a great job, but unfortunately, because of resources, call volume, those sorts of things, they can't be there every day in terms of enforcing the school zones. And they even if they could they can't be at every school um when the police are there sure they're able to nab a few people speeding in the school zone um but they can't catch everybody and so where you see an officer might be able to pull five or ten people over in the morning these cameras may be able to capture 50 people speeding the way the law, the state law is with these enforcement cameras, you must be going at least 10 miles an hour over. So again, we can get into the meat of potatoes when it comes time to choose a company, but these are not gonna be situations where, oh, I was going two miles an hour over, or the unwritten rule that you can go five miles an hour over. These are situations where someone's going 10 miles an hour, or actually 11, 
mm-hmm. like over ten in 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 a in a school zone. He's also I've seen concerns about cost. It's my understanding that it wouldn't cost the city anything that the cameras are provided to by these companies. Um, yes, that we would have to hire either an officer or a certified person in house to review them, but the revenue that would come in would far exceed um, what it would cost to hire somebody. And I just wanted to, to dispel another rumor that I heard, you know, about when, you know, here's the thing, when our officers give a ticket to someone speeding in a school zone, mm-hmm. zone, yes, it's more money, but the city gets like a couple dollars out of it. And while it's not a revenue generator, in these circumstances where if a ticket is issued, the city would receive a, a large portion of it. But again, I, I, I don't want to dive into that right now. I just want to put a mechanism in place that if these cameras are successful in other cities, that we would be ready to go at a moment's notice to implement them. And even, quite frankly, we can't even really shop around and, and, and look at these companies genuinely until we have an ordinance in place. If we don't have an ordinance in place, there's no sense in even bringing in some of these companies to look at them. So, that's my thoughts on that. Thank you. Uh, board member Simone. Commissioner Simone, sorry. Thank you. Um, I think this is premature. I am not a fan of these cameras. Uh, I would not like to see them in our city. I think it is a gotcha. You know, I believe uh, in grace. I think that uh, sometimes life happens. And for the person who speeds one time through a school zone, not realizing that they're actually doing it, because maybe their mind is on other things, or maybe they had something happen uh, that day in their life, and then the cameras picks them up, and they've gotten in trouble for a one-time infraction. I don't, I don't believe in that. I think if somebody is a chronic speeder, that eventually that they will get caught if they're continuously speeding through the school zones. So. Uh, I think that this has nothing to do with safety. I think it's all a money maker for these companies. And I think this is premature. I think when the time comes and if the commission decides that they want to go for these cameras, then we do an ordinance at that time. But right now, I'm not even interested in entertaining the idea. I think this is very premature and uh, I'm going to be voting against this. Okay. Vice Mayor. Excuse me. (coughs) Sorry. I think a number of months ago, we were at the Northwest Council of Elected Officials, and one of the companies happened to do a, um, a presentation. It was in North Lauderdale. What struck me is that they said that they had caught people doing 71 miles an hour by Morrow Elementary, which is horrific. The problem with what the red light cameras will do is it's a $100 fine that gets parceled out to different organizations, but you don't get points on your license. And I said to the gentleman who was presenting it, I said, let me understand, if I run a red light, I'll get points on my license. If I speed through a school zone, I get a $100 ticket and that's it. There's something really wrong with, and I recognize we're not discussing the legislation right now, but there's something really wrong with that. If you can do that kind of a speed through a school zone and you get a $100 ticket, that means nothing to your license. But if I run a red light anywhere else and it's not a school zone, you're going you're gonna to give me points on my license. Uh, and I just found that to be an amazing difference. So I'm just putting it out there so the public understands that if you do it and you're habitual in doing it, you're going to rack up a hundred bucks, but you're never going to lose your license for almost killing a kid or something. Uh, And that just blows my mind, just as an aside. I'm sure, too, I I understand those concerns. I think I would expect the state legislature to make amendments to this as time evolves. One would hope. 
you know, maybe they <clears> make <throat> it where after you three, four offenses, that you, it, it turns into a more serious type of infraction. You know, yes, I get the fact that our ticket might be three, four hundred dollars versus a hundred dollars. But if someone's speeding through three cities to get to work and they rack up two, three, four hundred dollars <throat> in tickets in a day, I think they're going to learn pretty quickly. What what we've seen, we, what these companies allege, and I'm sure we have to see studies and numbers, is that after the first several months, there is a drastic reduction in speeding in these areas. And while, yes, I'd like to see a max penalty for speeding in a school zone, I, I personally still think it's more effective if 50 people get a $100 ticket versus seven get a $300 ticket. Well, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just you know saying I'm the saying? legislation is no, horrible. But, that's, but, you know, we have to work with the legislation that's given at the time. But I just, I don't see any other way to slow people and, down, slow people down mm -hmm. and force traffic in our city. And we, we just, we don't have the resources to be everywhere. It's just not, it's, to me, it's not possible. I've seen too many accidents on Atlanta. And 66. Yeah, I've They're seen this too. Almost every week, across the Too many the accidents school. there. You know, I, I, again, I've had countless emails on this over the years. We have a solution to it. You know, again, we're not selecting a company. Right. Tonight, but it's my understanding a lot of these companies, there's no out, there's no cost if we want to back out once they're in. They're willing to take that risk. <clears throat> and I see in front of me a contract that says no cost to install. And it's no cost to say, you know what, this isn't working out, see you later. You know, my question is, what do we have to lose? You're not going to, and I respect Commissioner Simone's. I understand what you're saying. You get that person that one time they go through and they, but it's still, in my opinion, not going to be a gotcha because they weren't going two miles an hour over. They weren't going five over. They weren't going seven over. They had to be going 11 miles an hour over. It's pretty considerable, especially in the school zone. So I just don't know what we have to lose by passing the ordinance. I mean, we could pass the ordinance and never hire a company. True. You know, um, part of the law is going to require a study to show that there is a need for it, which every company that's come to us has done a study. They're offering. As, as <laughs> same as our police. We have identified a problem. There are requirements for public outreach, and I believe there's a re at least a 30-day minimum um, warning period. So when they do go up, if we pass this and if we decide to take on a company, there would be a considerable amount of time as a grace period for people to put warning in the plan. Now, if the contracts, if we go that route later on, come back that there's cost, then that, I would be taking a different position. But right now, I just don't see what we have to do. Okay. I'm going to say this. I'll throw this out there. I put it on social media. Um, and it's funny because when the city does things, they'll, they'll, they'll do polls. And I remember sometimes we had polls where 20 people responded and then we were told, oh, it's 80% of the people that responded and we took action. I had almost 400 comments, 40 of them were probably written, but regardless, there were probably eight people that were for this and everybody else had their own opinion not to. I do look at it as a money grab, and I could tell you that I had a kid on my baseball team this year, two years ago, and I don't know if you guys remember it. Right along Coral Bay there, I think there's three schools. Mm -hmm. He got hit by a car, and he got drug under the car, not because of speeding, just because the alertness of it, and the driver was probably a moron. On a bicycle. He was on a bicycle, correct. So to me, I don't think it's so much about the speeding, even though probably Atlantic is one of the worst speeding streets in Margate. It's more about the awareness. I know when the cops are out there, no one's speeding. But can we get cops out there every day? I don't know. Should we? 
Maybe it's something to look at. But I know if we put up some lights or something, just to tell people, school zone. And to me, you know, I looked at this every which way I could. And, and, uh, and I look at it as a money grab. And let me tell you, it's a big, and I'm not saying this in a, in a bad way, but this could generate, they were talking about thousands of tickets a day, possibly. You know, there's a lot of people that go up and down Atlantic Boulevard, a lot. So this could be a huge moneymaker, but is it going to solve the problem? I'm sure it'll help it a little bit, but we still need to let people know that it's a school zone. So to me, maybe putting out some more lights and putting cops out as much as possible would be the way to go. And I think doing this, I think is a little bit too premature, like Commissioner Simone's saying, and people are going to look at it as a precedence. And they're going to say, well, if the commission didn't really want the cameras, why did they approve this? So I think by approving this, you're going to set a precedence that, yes, it's going to be approved later on. So I'm not going to approve this. Um, maybe later we can address it, see how other cities are doing. But I'm, it's, it's going to be a very, very hard sell for me, I, I, I'm telling you. Um, Vice Mayor. Question to the city manager. With these cameras, because I know you've seen some of this stuff, do these cameras also, for example, if we, when we have an endangered adult and somebody missing who might be going down, he's shaking his head now already, so I, it might be going down the street during the time that these cameras were operating, I wanted to know if we would be able to use that for that because they were already there. My understanding is, is we cannot use the cameras for um, like active surveillance, but for um, <clears throat> I don't call, I don't call that active surveillance. I'm just saying somebody's lost. That are um, subsequent to you know the cameras being in place. Yes, we can review those and, and see if we can gather evidence from them. Because you know how many yeah. endangered adults we have right. wandering around that it might help. Correct. But then that I, would only be during the time that school is in session. Correct. Yeah, I'm not sure if they're running 24 hours or not. Just curious. Yeah, and I and I've met with with several companies, and correct, they're they're not used for you know we can't station someone there to be monitoring them no, all the no, time. I, I just, but if there was a deadly car accident, if right. there was a peeping yeah. tom alleged by the school fence every day at a certain time, then some that other type of that. right, they they can go back. It and wasn't do their that. primary reason for um, having it, but it was something that was caught on. I I do agree with you, Mayor, in terms of more awareness in the school zones. Um, I do believe if these cameras are installed per statute, they would have to have special signage and increased um, increased visibility. Um, I also know that the city gets to, for the most part, set the parameters uh, as to what triggers. So if you know if there's if on the fence about a gotcha, maybe it's after 12 miles an hour or 15. Um, but the city does get to set as long as it's over the state minimum of at least 10 miles an hour or more. Um, I did read the comments. I can't respond because of sunshine, but I did read the comments. There were some very good comments. There were some people that were a fan of it, but not in the school zone. They wanted it on Margate Boulevard or they wanted it here. Some of the people that commented, I'd say a lot of them aren't aware of what we can or cannot do with these cameras. So right away it was defensive, like, oh no, we're gonna, you know, I don't think that they're aware that they have to be going 11 miles an hour over, for example. Um, I, I don't think that they're aware that it's no points on the, you know, there's a lot of information that I don't think the public is quite aware of yet. Um, so I would just throw that out there, but I, I did read the comments and I know, I know there are some concerns about it. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I just find it hard to believe that someone's going to come in here and be upset because I got a ticket for going, let's say, 15 miles an hour with the speed limit on video with radar. You know, I'll admit, I've gotten a bunch of red light traffic camera tickets, and they're all gotcha. You know? And I argued those. I, I, but to win? I came close. <laughs> uh, I came close. But I'll tell you what, if the light had been red for 20 seconds and I blew through it, I wouldn't have argued it. 
it was one of those gotcha situations where I was halfway in the intersection. I, you know, I slowed one time, I slowed down to like one mile an hour before making the turn. I didn't stop all the way to zero. You know, I, it's, it's a total different situation. And I think that the state learned from those red light cameras when they, when they did this law. Um, but to me, even if we were to reduce the speeding by 25%, I think it's worth it. And there's nothing stopping us from still ticketing. I'm sure if we're physically out there, which we still should be, and we ticket someone, they're not going to get double ticket. Our ticket would override the, cam the, the traffic camera ticket. So there still would be opportunities where someone could be hit with a much stiffer ticket. Commissioner Sanon. Yeah, again, I don't see the need for this right now. If, you know, watch the cities, watch what happens with these cameras and other cities that want to take it on. Um, and then if we want it, then we can always bring this ordinance back. But I don't think we need to have this ordinance right now. If, if I, have a, I have a question for Kale, I don't know if you, I, I hope someone here has the data. I know there were several studies done. Sure, some of them were provided by the companies, so of course they're going to say that there's, but RPD also did a study. It, can, can we get some just general numbers as to what the average, you know, in, uh, how many infractions there were on an average? I mean, I, I don't have average speeds they were pretty or high. whatnot, but yeah, I mean, it's the studies show thousands of, of speeders a day. Um, you know, majority of those are while school is in session, not during the school zone. So, you know, while the school zone, the 15 mile an hour is flashing, um, and I'm just thinking off my head looking at the studies. Um, so the, the 15 minutes or the 30 minutes before school starts, 30 minutes after school, probably amounted to half the tickets, and then the other half are while they're in school or in session. You get a half or huge. Yeah. Right. No, it, it's significant. Day. The, the, the studies do support right. it. Yeah. Each study Figure was. Figure 25% and there's 2,500 cars a day speeding. It's still a large number reduction. And just, and just to mention one other thing, because the cameras can only enforce during the hours of school. Mm -hmm. yeah. The 10, 11 mile an hour over situation, there's a lower threshold because that's while the lights are flashing. But have, having talked to several of these companies, when it's when the lights are not flashing but school's in session, the city has a very large discretion as to what the trigger is. So if we wanted to make it where during school session you have to be going 20 miles an hour, so you're getting the person that's going 70, that could take 80, away. right, you know, again, I, it's not a gotcha. If I wanted... Right. And and no doubt about it, Mayor, it, it it's going to generate revenue for the city and it's going to be beneficial. Abs absolutely. If you're going 50 but, but the, 35, you should get a ticket. So I, I'm not, again, not a fan of having a low threshold on these things. But when I'm sitting outside of Margate Middle School and a Mustang 5.0 is going, Wah! And you can't, you, you don't even see them drive by because they're going so fast. Right. I don't see the issue on sending that person a ticket in the mail. And that's that's really who I'm trying to go after. Mm -hmm. All right. We're going to open up to the public. I mean, just, you know, it's, it's funny the way Tallahassee works because if they really wanted this to be effective, like Vice Mayor was saying, you'd get points. Right. I mean, it wouldn't be a money thing. And it's funny how they reduced the ticket to, I think they're $100. $100. Yeah. You know, so I, I, I totally look at this as a money grab and, you know, using the uh, school safety as, as the, uh, the cry for help. You know, if we were really concerned about this and this is a problem, then let's just put more cop cars out on Atlanta. That, that's what you do. I mean, you're going to get speeders, and it's just, it's unfortunate. So I'll leave it at that. Antonio, do you want to go again or? No. All right. All right. Open it to the public.
Um, didn't we just put some camera poles or something by the schools, school zones? Don't we have stick camera poles or something there now? Those are um, license plate readers. They're not radar cameras. So those have nothing to do with the speed no. limit? Okay. Um, well, um, I know that in the past they used to park an empty police car on Atlantic Boulevard, Southgate Boulevard. I can tell you for sure that slowed me down a couple times, and I'm sure it slowed everybody else down. So, I mean, that will slow people down. You're not going to get the revenue or the money that you're looking for, but it will slow people down. Um, as far as cameras, I, I don't think that the cameras for the schools is going to be a good idea. I think you just need to utilize the police that we pay or hire more police, get some more policemen out on the street, or park those empty cars you got. Do something like that. But as far as, also as far as cameras, um, I don't know how many of y'all know this, but there's cameras all over Margate watching everybody. And don't think that we don't know it because it's already been said by the Commissioner Arcerio a long time ago. They're everywhere. Okay, I've never, I've gone through the thread of the comments and I was just really surprised at the amount of convoluted and hyper-emotional responses, and mostly uninformed. The, um, one of the things they're not aware of is this city already has cameras set up around the city that are license plate readers. The city already has that. In fact, my community has it. I installed one, and it's already solved at least three crimes working on a couple more. But again, the comments are like all over the place. Uh, one, uh, Commissioner Simone, you suggested that, well, if they're only speeding this time and then not a habitual speed, speeder, then uh, listen, it could be that one time that it caused a, tra a tragic accident. It doesn't matter if it's one time, a hundred times. We have to remind them to slow down. If the commission wants to do something about this issue, perhaps you can look into additional signage with the flashing lights. Because right now, the flashing lights that are up above, if you don't look up at that particular moment, you can drive through it and, and miss it. Why not poles on the sides of the street with a bigger panel of flashing lights? That would help a lot. But, um, Mayor, you speak about it's a money grab and it shouldn't be a money issue. Well, you keep bringing it up. But what you don't bring up is, are these effective? Will this remind people to drive slowly through a school zone when it's the school zone time in the zone? Yes, it will. I haven't heard any arguments against that. The idea that it's a money grab, that's a side issue. It, the money is just to be there as a punitive to remind people not to speed in the school zone. So I think this is an important issue. I think you really should vote in favor of it. Should we, in the future we have a tragic ex accident uh, in speeding in the school zone, I think you'll feel very badly about your vote if you don't vote in favor of it. I've heard other people say that this is an invasion of my privacy. You're in public. You're on a public road. What kind of privacy do you anticipate having? It's ridiculous. But I would suggest you vote on it. You don't have to install the cameras yet. You can wait and see how they operate in other cities. You can review the contracts to make sure that you have control over the tolerances. Uh, I suggest you do move ahead with it because all the rest of this has been hyper-emotional content and logic that just uh, I can't understand it. Thank you. I'm not sure if you heard what I said. A, a, a little boy was run over by a car going slow. So to me, if you're doing 15 or 25, 30, 40 miles per hour, there's still consequences. So it's it's the alertness, and I agree with you. With, but hold on, I don't want to go back and forth, but I, I agree there needs to be alertness there. That you're done. But alertness is what it's about. And if this wasn't a money grab, then the state would be funding this, and the state would be giving the money back to the city. 
It's not punitive. It's all about money. It always comes down to money. It comes down to money. That's what it all comes, comes down to. And there's no price you could put on a life. Like I said, that kid got ran over doing a car doing less than the speed limit. So just because you put them out here and you're going to say, well, we could make it where it's 10 miles an hour over, so you can get hit at 50 miles per hour, the problem is going to be the same thing. We just need to have more alertness out there, more cops, more signs. Margaret resident. These school zone speed cameras are nothing more than a profit-making cash cow money grab for camera vendors and governments who put them in place, disguised in the language of school safety. More tickets issued result in more revenue for both the city and camera vendor as each get a cut of the $100 fine. The success of these speed camera companies rely on the most amount of tickets they can be issued, breeding the incentive of manipulation at the cost of innocent drivers who are unjustly cited due to malfunctioning cameras. The cost is a five-year contract of keeping these cameras in the city, having violations reviewed and approved by an unsworn designee creates the possibility of kickbacks to the a person who's tasked with reviewing the violations. Cameras will not get speeders to slow down as fines arrive as much as three to four weeks later, allowing the driver to speed through the school zone unchecked before the first check uh, ticket arrives in the mail, followed by more after that. A police presence in school zones is effective in getting speeders to slow down as drivers are stopped on the spot and made aware. Normally, school zone speed and tickets are doubled. The minimum fine is $200 with three points on the driver's license. And eventually, a driver with a speeding problem will have their license suspended and no longer be able to speed through school zones. Speed camera enforcement citations are civil infractions of $100 with no points on a driver's license. It does nothing to stop chronic speeders as they continue to speed through school zones as long as they pay. These tickets are intentionally set low at $100 to encourage people to pay them and be done with it. These tickets are issued to the vehicle and not the driver as there's no proof of who's actually driving the vehicle. After fines stack up, the vehicle's registration is suspended, and after that, a lien is placed on the vehicle. These cameras do nothing to protect a child who gets hit by a vehicle, but the camera company in the city will still get a $100 ticket from it. These cameras have been in Georgia for a few years, and cameras have been found to be incorrectly timed with speed so zone flashers, resulting in drivers being ticketed for exceeding the speed school zone limit with the normal speed limit when the normal speed limit was in effect with thousands of erroneous tickets issued in single cities in less than a year. Other instances of the speed school zone signs and speed limit signs were incorrectly placed, resulting in hundreds of thousands of dollars of erroneous violations being issued. It was the public or the news media who brought the, these errors to the attention of local governments after violations were incorrectly issued. It's a strain on the court system by having tickets contested and a burden on the accused to take time to defend themselves against erroneous violations. There's no oversight or incentive by the government to, and camera companies to ensure their accuracy. Camera companies have, have many lawsuits brought against them, and their defense is that it's the responsibility of the municipality. The safety of our children is always our priority. The cameras, the cameras are going to be used during the school, the session, well, well, the schools are in sessions. They are not going to be used on weekends, holidays, vacation time, or any other time that the schools are not in sessions. But you're going into a five-year contract with these companies. Tickets are going to be $100. So the city is going to get part of it, but the company is going to get another part of it. It's $100 for, for the ticket, $60 comes to the city, and then, our, and then around $20 goes to the company that is doing it. So what's the big deal? $40, maybe we're not going to get it because the, kit, the tickets might get contested and we're not going to get anything. I think that we, we have police officers, and I mean officers, more than one at those times, at least one or two on each side of the road with official vehicles with the lights on during the times when the kids are coming in and going home, it will be more effective. As far as I am concerned, I, pour, I pay more attention to a police officer than to a camera. Sometimes people don't even notice or know or care that they are cameras, but an officer with his official vehicles and lights on is more obvious. 
We will also have legal issues with this type of program, and there has been with the red light cameras, and we will probably be spending more money than we received with a lot more headaches. I do not think that cameras are more effective than an officer, and I would rather give my money to a police department. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. We have a motion, correct? We have a motion. Oh, Vice Mayor. I would agree with everything everyone said with the exception of one thing. There have been at least 20, if not more, accidents at 66th and Atlantic, which is directly across from Margate Middle, at about 2.30 in the afternoon, right before kids get out of vehicle versus car, or rather, I'm sorry, vehicle versus, uh, vehicle versus pedestrian, motorcycle versus pedestrian, vehicle versus bicyclists. It's not necessarily while the kids are coming and going, but it is during the time school is in session. And if possibly, that would alert someone not to hit a person who's either crossing the street or on a bicycle, then maybe this ordinance, at least being in effect so we can, if we choose to do something about it, is not a bad idea. But there have been at least 20 times that I've gotten an Everbridge alert right there on 66th and Atlantic, directly across from the middle school. And so whether it's a child or an adult on a bike, and it's always car versus a walker, a bicyclist, a motorcyclist, then maybe this might teach people. It's not so much about giving the ticket, because actually it's more than $20 to the company. It's like it could be up to 38 out of the 60. But if people understood, hey, you're going to see me speed there, or maybe this guy's going to cross the street and I ought to consider stopping instead of going through him, then maybe there's a, a value to it in the education part of it. So I don't think I have a problem allowing us first reading, which means we can change it to second reading anyhow, to go that far. I don't believe in necessarily doing a five-year contract with anybody. I'm a great believer in an out clause if something doesn't work, especially since we don't have the investment. But as, And I've read what you've sent me, and I happen to agree with three quarters of it, but one thing you said is wrong. Anybody who watches those cameras has to go through a, a, um, a class to be certified to do so. So it's not anybody on the street. There has to be a certification to allow someone to watch those cameras and decide whether or not the person should get a ticket. So there is a safeguard there. Yeah, they have but to be specially trained. They have to be specially trained because I read the, I read the stuff. So that's just my and opinion. If I could just add a, from a couple of the comments. Number one, it doesn't stop our police from being out there. Right. So we, we I don't think we have be, enough of them to be in every We can still be out there. But the reality is we have a high call volume. We're a safe city, but we still have a lot of calls. You also now have mutual and automatic aid. So there's many cases where, you know what, things are going fine in Margate, but we've got to respond to North Lauderdale because there was a carjacking or something. We cannot guarantee that our officers are going to be there every morning. And listen, I, I feel like I'd be doing a disservice to say that we could guarantee an officer at every school zone every day. So I wanted to put that out there. From the companies I've talked to, and of course I'll see it in the data, but repeat offenders, there's not many of them. After they get one or two tickets, they're, they're, these companies, I mean, obviously they can go back in a database and see. There's not repeat offenders. In terms of the courts, and again, this is the importance, and we're not selecting a company today. Right. We're just allowing, if we want to have the cameras, to allow that. And it's just for sure. But if we get to the point where we do want a company, we're going to be looking at the contracts because they're they're different. The systems are different. Yes, it might be a five-year contract. I'd prefer less. But many companies offer a zero-cost out clause. There are some companies that offer to represent the city if we're sued or if we're taken to court or challenged on it. <clears throat> There's companies that will represent us as part of their fee to handle these 
these challenges. Mr. pointed out in Georgia, there was instances where timing has been off or whatever. It's gonna happen, it happens. But the problem was corrected. It, there, there are mechanisms in place for someone to, to challenge these things. And it's a simple fix. They go back and they readjust the flashing and the cameras. It's also important, again, I don't, I don't wanna sound like a broken record or keep jumping ahead, but if we were to get a company and look at them, we're gonna look at the type of system that they have. Some are still photos. Some are just radar. Those are very hard to, to th those, sorry, those are very easy to get overturned in court. Some companies provide live video. video where it's kind of irrefutable, right? So we would look at all of that information if and when we get to that point of selecting a company. So I understand your concerns about the contracts. Um, I was in a, I worked for a company that sold things to law enforcement, totally different than red light cameras. But I can tell you in a, in a newer technology like this, these companies are willing to bend over backwards to accommodate the city and, and, and make sure that there's outside scene because they want to, you know, get our business. So maybe if we try and do this in five years from now, there might be a cost to set it up and to, to take it out. But right now, they're practically <coughs> giving this equipment to us. But I, I, I ask the board to look not look past, but kind of put the companies and how they operate and what they will or will not offer aside. We're not deciding on that today. We're just simply saying, hey, do we want to allow, do we want to have this tool in our toolbox if we decide <coughs> to use it? Question. It almost sounds like uh, the decision's already been made by the commissioners that they already want to can this because we've certainly gotten off topic of this ordinance. Just a couple things. I know, uh, Kale, I don't know if you know this, but coming off of 65th heading towards Lagrange, are there any cameras or are there, are there any fo um, lights that are insinuating a school zone? I don't. So if you I, are I, on 66th and you go to head west on Atlantic. South. 65th going south to Atlantic. 60, 60, I think you're 66, I think. 66? 66 heading south to Atlantic, and you turn right to go west. There's no flashing light until you get to the One Mile Canal. I think that's where yeah. um, uh, Atlantic West school yeah. zone begins. That's correct. If you go the, left, there's no there's no flashing light. There's okay. only a um, sign, I think, on the corner that just says school zone left and right. Okay. Because Vice Mayor, I heard you say it at 65th or 50, we're, we're, there's, there's, there's a lot of accidents there. I, I Can you tell me when the last one was with a pedestrian and a car? Was, was it two weeks ago? I, I, I don't remember an accident being there in a long time, but. No, I getting, see it all the time. And the reason why I know this is because my mother was always getting her hair done right in that plaza on 66 or whatever it was. And literally, as I would go over, to see her or, or meet him there around 220. I I would say you just met. You, I just got an alert to go home another way. So I knew there were a lot of people. And I believe within the last couple of weeks I saw another. But getting back to my point, there's no lights there insinuating no, at school at zone. The end, it wasn't doing the flash plug school. That happened to me last night. So it wasn't doing school hours. It is during, no, it was during school hours, but not during the time when the buses were coming. But, but getting back to my point, there's no light. There's no light insinuating schools. No, it won't be. Well, that's why I'm getting back to your point. You're saying that these cameras will fix that problem. If you know that while school is in session, that the cameras will work, because that's okay. what they're saying, it's while it's in session. It's, I think it's only 30 minutes before there, the oh, end of school. But it's all, all things around the but I mean, to make an educated decision, if you would have came up and said that there were 10 accidents at this particular spot mm -hmm. because there was no, because they were speeding. I mean, I don't even know how you could speed at that intersection if you're coming out of it. I don't even think you're doing the, the, oh, the recommended speed. I think they were going straight down Atlantic Boulevard. Mm -hmm. It was on Atlantic. Okay, but getting back to my point, I heard a lot of residents say, put a cop car out there. Put a cop car with the lights on out there. 
even if there's nobody in it. But after Get the some second time, you see that there's no officer there. I'm from the time where we actually had a stand-up cutout of a, of a fire, of a motorcycle cop there, who was a Margate cop, and everybody thought it was cute, but it didn't have the required, uh, you know, nothing happened to help it. We all know where the empty cars were, because you go past it once, you know it's the empty car, unless you're gonna keep moving it around so people aren't sure. I, uh, I'll go back to what I said, it's having flashing lights, having police presence, because what you're doing tonight is you're, you're setting a precedence that you're gonna pass this. If, you, if, if you're not, then you should make a recommendation to table it. Because what you're doing right now is you're saying, yes, I'm interested in this, Yes, I'm going to move forward with this. You would prefer tabling to get to actually read some letters some of these contracts are? I haven't seen the contracts. I would say table it until we see what's going on with other cities. There's one other city that I know of, Coconut Creek, just approved it. And again, I'm going to go back to, there were over 300 comments of residents that did not want this. So yeah. I represent the residents. It's not a personal thing to me. I'm not a money grabber. There's no way in hell I would ever vote for this. And I'll leave it at that. So I'll make a motion to table it. Second. I, I, I don't see why we would table it, pass it, and get the companies in here and present. Can you, can you, are you allowed to speak on the table? That's what I was just going to check no, to see if the motion, not. I think a motion to table isn't debatable. Unless you okay. remove it so he can speak. Okay. Um, it's not debatable. So we call the roll, right? Yeah. To the chair. Yes. Is there a time certain for the table? Oh. Never. <laughs> it's, on, it's on the table till it's taken a off. A year. You want a year? Yeah. So till next. See how other cities are doing with it? Till June 2025. Commissioner Caggiano? No. Commissioner Simone? Yes. Commissioner Serio? No. Vice Mayor Schwartz? No. Mayor Rosano? Yes. So now, if you realize, fails, though, this is just the first reading. You can do that. that the next time. But you're setting a precedence that, that we want to have no consideration for. Why would you school zones? Why would you because bring it back? All it does is allow you to have something in place should you decide you want to do it and not have to wait over a month and a half so to why do would you exactly table it? this. Why would you table it then? <sighs> That doesn't allow you. I'll make a motion to table it for three months. Is that better? I don't know. We'll see. I would wait. I would rather you do it after the first reading so I could read about some of these companies. You could still read about it. You need a second. I need a second if I can get one. I guess not. Great. Okay. We are back to the original motion to approve this ordinance on first reading, and then there'll be a public hearing scheduled. For the meeting in so, David, let me ask you, if this doesn't pass, it could still come back, correct? We, yeah, you can always bring it back again on first reading. Okay. So, oh, wait, so, so, if so it would be move, a public... So, if we move uh, forward with wanting to uh, initiate this or look at this further, we still could do it and then bring back an ordinance to do so. I don't think so. so. You're you're voting on the, no, we're voting on the ordinance. This has nothing to do with the companies. I think no. I think no. everybody has to. This is this is first reading on an ordinance. In order to be able to to get the company. to provide for this program, you need to have an ordinance in place pursuant to the statute. So we the can never pick a company and pass the ordinance. So the well, you need the ordinance Correct. first before you even consider going out to pick a company. But we don't have to pick a company. You don't have to pick Correct. a company. You can just have the ordinance in place and not do anything with it. Correct. So we don't have to have an ordinance either. If you don't have an ordinance, you can't do the program. Okay. And this is and this is the ordinance is required two readings. This is first reading, and then second reading will be held. And at second reading, you always have to have a public hearing. The first one too. You, you don't have to have public hearings for first reading, even if there's a motion. Even if there, even if there's a motion, it's your practice to allow for public comment, yeah. but you don't have to have public comment at first reading. So we go above and beyond with our yeah, we public do. comments. We yes, do. we've always done that. Yeah. Always no, done. And I think yeah. it's great. And I'll just correct myself. the The program does allow for the uh, detection systems to operate throughout the school day. Yeah. Yeah. It's throughout. It's from a half hour before. 
half hour after yeah. during the day, the, during the full school. While day. school's in session, yeah. yes. While school's in session, yeah. correct. So we, we have the motion to take. Okay. No more discussion? Call the roll. Commissioner Casciano? Yes. Commissioner Simone? No. Commissioner Serio? Yes. Vice Mayor Schwartz? Yes. Mayor Rosano? No way. So this passes. So this ordinance passes on first reading. Second reading is scheduled for July third. Third. All right. That's it. God bless. Thank you for staying. Meeting adjourned.